UConn is UConning again. That's what they're doing. 82-52 final score. This is the ninth consecutive NCAA tournament game that UConn has won by 13 or more points. This program is absurdly scary to everyone that's not a UConn fan. And it's it's been so dramatic, like these margins, the the style points, the way they're winning these games has been so explosive that it's truly forcing people like us to look back 20 years and think if we've ever seen anything like this. Um, it's hard to talk about individual games, but more than it is to be like, is this the best college basketball team since I've been alive? And that that's crazy. We'll get to UConn, Illinois. That, that's going to be a really fun game. But at least for this night against the team they played in the national championship last year, UConn uh, belonged in a different league than San Diego State once again. Yeah, and I and you know I haven't been the biggest San Diego State fan in general, um, but to, in my opinion, they played a half of a lifetime, and in, in that first half, at least the first ten minutes, and you know what that got them? It got them down nine, right? Like it got them down nine, and and, and then. You know, coming into halftime, down nine, Dan Hurley being the maniac he is. And I say maniac in the most endearing way possible. Like, I would want him to be my maniac, my coach. Probably when the halftime said this nine-point lead is disrespectful to, like, the UConn Huskies before us. And the Huskies all – and they all looked him in his eye and said, you know what, yeah, you're right, Dan. Everyone shook their head like, yeah, coach is right. Let's go out there and run them out the gym real quick. 30 ball. Like, it was not like it was nothing. It got the 20 before you could even take a blink. And then they end up winning this game by 30 points. This team is just so well put together and talented that, you know, they, they're they able to get contributions from so many different guys. Like Spencer, Castle, Newton were all great in this game. Caravan started out hot, kind of tailored out towards the end. Donovan McClingan, I don't think, played well at all. He looked rattled. He was turning the ball over, missing layups. Still ended up with 8-8 eight and eight in this game. Um but just didn't have the at that great impactful of a performance that you thought he would have had. But this, like I said, this UConn team, it's something about, I don't know if it's the sets or just how also just combined with the sets, how smart they are. They just always know what to do, how to counter things in sets, where to cut, when to cut. The person passing the ball knows where to put it when that person cuts. This is just, we're watching a team right now that is in sync and an extension of their coach, I feel like, with their mentality and how hard they play. And that's credit to Hurley when he put together this team. Like, he's he's got a group of guys who all kind of, I think, think like him, uh, play for him. And is Cam Spencer not the most perfect, like, Hurley player of all time? Yeah. Both no, those is. guys are just crazy. Yes. Um, yeah, they, they embody Dan Hurley, which is a compliment, obviously, but – um, I don't know. It's one of those things where like, I, I don't think other coaches in this sport could take this roster and have this team playing this well. Like he's elevating them and they are great players. Don't get me wrong. Klingon's an NBA player. Castle's an NBA player. Uh, Tristan Newton's one of the best guards in the country. Cam Spencer might end up in the NBA. Caravan. I love him. Caravan. I, there'll be a, a moment before Caravan's done at UConn, in my opinion, where he will be an all American. And there's to me they're still playing better than the sum of their parts and their parts are pretty damn great um just so good just so complete it never feels forced it never feels stressed like it, early in this game san diego state showed up uh, i thought they were up for a fight in this game it was single digits at half which i get like you're down nine and half that's not something to put a gold star next to your name for but against uconn it kind of is and, you know, San Diego State had this at one possession for much of the first half. Ladee was killing early. And it still, it just never felt in doubt. It never felt like UConn was sped up or nervous. It just, the, the quality of shots this team gets offensively astound me. It's like wide open threes or runouts in transition or dunks or layups for Klingon. And he left some out there, I thought, too. But uh, they just, they never take a bad shot. And over the course of 40 minutes, it wears you down so much because they're also so good defensively. It's like, like Ladee was going to have to beat Klingon one-on-one -on -one over and over again while UConn gets wide open shots at the other end. And to do that against a defense that's as physical and as good as San Diego State's should, should terrify everybody because I don't think there's a team in this tournament that can stop UConn at all. Yeah. Uh, it's just, um, you, well, wait, you you think there's no team that can stop them? 
No, I don't. I mean, defensively. I'm saying UConn's going to get open looks for 40 minutes against any team in this tournament. Oh yeah, hundred percent. They are, uh, and that and that goes back to what I said: the 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 sets and how they cut and how they play just make things so flow so well offensively. And like this team, like isn't a good three point shooting team. They're not, but you know they're able to knock down timely ones. But they're also not really required to because they have a guy like clinging down low who can clean things up around the rim, and then they got guys who can attack. And Tristan Newton's one of the better playmakers in the country. Gets guys easy shots. It's uh, it's like you said, as Hurley's getting the most out of these guys, and these guys are, are are humming right now. Like what they haven't had a game within single digits in this tournament run between last year and this year. It's just like pure domination. And then this year, what thirty point win, thirty point win, thirty point win. Like that's <laughs> that's all they're doing. They're just handling business right now. Yeah, I, look, I think UConn has the best third, fourth, fifth best player in the country. Like, I individually, not not as a collection. I'm saying, like, because that's the interesting thing. They're, if they were to play Purdue, Zach is the best player on the court. I think when they play Illinois, Terrence Chan's the best player on the court, and that's not disrespectful to UConn's best players. Trust me. They, to me, if you were listing every player in every game for every potential matchup UConn could play against anyone in the country – UConn's five best players are all in the top seven in every single game. Like their their fifth best player would be the third best player on any other team in the country, in my opinion. And that's insane. Like the depth of talent here is just absurd. The high level of it, like this roster is loaded. And again, I think Hurley's elevating them even beyond what they are on paper. It's, it's special. It's one of those teams we're going to look back on years from now and be like, holy shit, how did that team come together and have that many guys on this team? Um, Klingon was kind of a story in this one. I mean, as much as you can be a story in a 30-point win, but four for nine from the floor, only eight points and eight rebounds. I thought Ladee was killing him early, and then I thought Klingon left a bunch of really open shots out there and just missing easy looks at the rim. What would you make of Klingon, and are you concerned at all? Uh, I am only because I thought that the physicality of Ladee um, looked like it bothered Klingon. Um, and I'm not, and, and, you know, you look ahead to the Illinois game. That's not something I really, I guess, fear. Um, even on the other side, let's even doing a little projecting If they get the Clemson. That's a physical front court. Also, I think it's time to have the conversation that like everyone wants to see the Klingon ED thing. That's not going to end up like, I think most people think it's going to end up. I just want to say that. What's it going to end up like? It's gonna end up like Zach Eady taking his lunch, like that. Clean. I don't know if Clean can check Eady, okay. and I think Eady can check. We just continue to give UConn fans more whiteboard material. We should probably learn our lesson. Uh, now, but. Uh, yeah, we should. We should. And if we if it does happen, I wouldn't be surprised. But like the physicality of Ladee definitely affected Klingon in this game, and Zach Eady's a physical presence and a physical player. So. Yeah. I, I I just uh I just something I'm keeping in the back of my head. Yeah, I did. I sent a text to a group in the middle of this game that said, uh, "Donovan Klingon is what people who say Zach Eady is just big think Zach Eady is," and I kind of stand by that. Um, he's very good. Wait, what, wait, is he hurt though? He's not hurt. He's not hurt. Oh, okay, at, just, at least that's okay. he wasn't hurt last game. That's what I was told. So I okay. But that's the thing is like they they don't even need more from Klingon at all. Like we're we're nitpicking the fact that he finished with eight and eight in a game they won by thirty. Like Klingon could have finished with negative twenty two and negative twenty two, and they win this game by four. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it's absurd. Um, and Spencer and Newton are just like when they're playing the way they were in this game, just destroying, just dominating. It's you, you know Klingon can slide. It's, it's the beauty of this five man starting lineup. Like Klingon can be the fifth best player most nights, and that's fine. And then he could have a night where he's unstoppable and he's the first option. I just, I'm so impressed by this collection of talent that they have. Um, we'll do the preview. I think UConn Illinois is going to be a really, really interesting, fun game. Just quickly, though, if you were Dan Hurley, if you were UConn, were you hoping for Illinois or were you hoping for Iowa State? Or, or or are you Hurley and UConn? You don't give a damn because you know you're that much better than everyone. 
I think you don't give a damn. And also, I might have a hot take. I think they want Illinois. I think they would have rather had Illinois. Because they're psychopaths and they want the <laughs> the explosive team? I, I th- But I also think they think they could stymie that a little, little bit more. Okay. All right. We'll get into it on the preview. You, 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 you kind of defensively, man, like, well, we're going to talk about it, but like the Castle Shannon matchup, like there's a lot of matchups that I'm intrigued to see in this yeah. game. Definitely. We will get into it in depth in the preview. Um, just for the record, I think if UConn had played Iowa State, they win that game 79 to 39. Like, I, I don't see how Iowa State scores on UConn at all. I straight up don't think they could score. Um, I think Illinois is going to be closer by default because Illinois will score. Illinois will score. UConn might need to score 100 to win this game. UConn can UConn, UConn could probably score 130 against Illinois if they needed to. So I'm, I'll leave my prediction for the next video. But um, I think deep down, if if we could force these guys to get on a lie detector test, they would tell you Iowa State would have been an easier matchup than Illinois. But again, these guys are all wired like serial killers. They might be relishing the fact they get to play Terrence Shannon right now when everyone's talking about Terrence Shannon and Shut them up. Do the UConn thing where they win by 19 and keep it rolling. Um, shut up. We'll see. Congrats to UConn, San Diego State. Last question. Uh, where will you – do you have a new respect for the San Diego State program? Because last year they were in the national championship game, and you and I kind of bemoaned that the whole time and sort of just said, this sucks. They're like – they aren't that good, whatever, one-time thing. No, well, this back-to-back Sweet 16s now. They did it with guys leaving the program at the end of last season. Lady going from a non-starter to an All-American level player. Like, do you have a new respect for San Diego State, or how do you feel about this program these days? Yeah, uh, do you want uh, uh, do you want the honest answer? I, I want the honest answer, Cart. Not really, no. Uh, why? I just like good, like good on them. I don't got to. I I don't know. Here's where I'm at with them. I think they are a much more winning ready program than I gave them credit for last year. Like I, I won't be surprised if they make a sweet 16 again next season and just keep doing this. Um, They're a team I wouldn't want to see in the first two rounds, of the NCAA tournament. I think they've gotten horrible. Can we talk about draw luck? I, I, you get UConn in the sweet 16 after you had to play them in the title game last year. What's that? Like uh, this, this team's undefeated in the last years when they don't play UConn. Like, <laughs> And I get like they had to get all the way to the title game to get UConn last year, but it's just they haven't lost to anybody that's not this dynasty. And who knows where they would have made this year if you if you put this team in the West region where we have Clemson and Alabama right now. You don't think San Diego State's winning that region based on what you've seen? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, see, I do, I do, I really do. The D's amazing though. Okay, all right. One day we'll see if we can. Uh, we can get you to respect the Aztecs. Congratulations, UConn. Can't wait for UConn, Illinois. Uh, we'll have a preview up on the channel later today. If you've been watching our videos on the Sleepers Media channel this March, then you know already that our presenting sponsor is My Bookie. My Bookie is our favorite place to place bets, and you can place bets with us. Card, tell the people about My Bookie. Let me tell you about My Bookie quickly here. It has absolutely everything you need. It has odds boosts, parlays, expert predictions, alternate lines, anything that you need. My Bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. And right now, we have a first deposit bonus up to $1,000 if you use promo code SLEEPERS. That's promo code SLEEPERS for, I almost messed that up, Greg, but it is promo code SLEEPERS for a first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. The madness is winding down, but there's still plenty of time to get some bets out there. Do so with my bookie, the official sports book of Sleepers Media. Yeah, that's promo code Sleepers, or as Cart says, promo code Sleepers. It's <laughs> promo code Sleepers. Uh, thank you, my bookie. Link in the description of this video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Oh.